Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna do a pressure transfer into a keg from my Firmzilla. I hope it works well. I've never done it before properly. So keep watching, see you soon. I have a keg full of sanitizer at the moment, which is a 19.5 litre keg. Uh, I have my Firmzilla, which I've done a 20 litre uh, brew. Uh, what is it? I've got 20 litres of beer that is now finished fermenting and popped and everything else is working really well. On th in theory, I've lost at least one and a half litres in trube. So I should have only 18 litres or so. Pardon me, 18, 18 and a half, 18 and a half litres or so of beer. So when I pressure transfer into my keg, it shouldn't fill to the brim. So I should be safe just to let it run until it finishes. So we'll soon see, won't we? Okay, so what I'm planning to do first is fill my keg up. It's got sanitizer in it at the moment. I'm going to fill it up with uh, CO2, just put about 10 pounds of pressure in there, just to get some pressure in there. Once that's pressurized, which is now, I'm just gonna whack a, one of these in, just on the other side, not that one, this one. It's a, uh, it's just a serving tap, just to basically run the, oh, it's got a leak, look at that. He didn't know. So I'm gonna run a bit of sanitizer up through the pipe in this tube here so that it's all sanitized internally, hopefully. So I'll just crack the tap, just to let the, um, let the sanitizer out, just like that. And I'll just pump that through until the sanitizer stops flowing. Now from here on in, I'm not opening the keg, it's staying shut. So now I'm pretty much Purge, I will be purging the oxygen out of here as well. So that's just by letting the gas run through this pipe and out for about a minute or so. Once the water stops, or once the sanitizer stops flowing, I will then, here it goes. So now I've just got gas coming out and that's oxygen mostly. So I'll close that. Now oxygen will float on top of CO2, which is a good thing for me. It means everything's gonna come out the top is gonna to be oxygen. So I just crack the valve, let a bit out. A bit more. You can hear it from Okay, so now I've purged the oxygen out of the tank. So I'll just quickly purge it out of there as well, which is nicely done. So all the all the CO2 is now inside the vessel, and all I've got now is CO2, just for good luck. Okay, that was loud, I know, sorry. But now what I'm gonna do is finish that. Now my keg is pressurized. I'm now going to transfer my gas over to the Firmzilla which I'll show you. This is my Firmzilla. It's finished fermenting. I'll just unwrap it now so you guys can see. That's my beer. It has sort of cleared out. I can't do a cold crash because um, I don't have a fridge to do that in at the moment. But uh, I reckon I could handle that anyway. I'll just take this off so we can see a bit more. You can see my vessel has got a lot of uh, bits on top. So what we have in here is the ball that is a float that will actually allow me to pick up the best of the beer. What you can see here is hops, and underneath is a clear beer, or relatively clear beer. So I'm gonna now put pressure in the one side that doesn't have the ball tube on. On this side, I'm gonna run it in the in out pipe, into the out pipe of the keg which is in the out pipe of the keg. So you see that's the out pipe. That's where the tube goes down to the bottom. I'm doing that because I don't wanna froth up the beer too much. I just want it to go to the bottom and slowly fill up. So it should work well. So I have my transfer tube. 
just two ends. Luckily, these uh, joins here have um, multiple connections, so you can connect on either one and it will work. So I'll pop that one on here, which a little bit, a little bit of beer came up, and then whack that onto here, which should be, in theory, relative to the same pressure, but it's not quite. So what I'll do is I'll now take the pressure back off my um, regulator to about five pounds, I would say, and then I'll start transferring. As soon as you let pressure out of the keg, the pressure from here will push the beer through. And now the pressure's out of the keg. So now I'll open that valve, and that will now slowly pump beer into my keg without oxygen getting involved. How do you, what do you think about that, eh? Now I'm sorry, I can't open the keg to show you, but I can show you the fermenter dis, uh, um, emptying. So I'll put you onto that. We'll speed this one up. Just, I'll quickly show you just what I'm doing. I've got the little check valve open, which is letting gas out. You may be able to hear it. There's CO2 coming out of that slowly while CO2 is being pumped into this vessel and the pressure of the CO2 is pushing the beer through my pipe, which is not too bad. It's a little bit, bit cloudy, but it's not too bad. And that is filling up my keg. So we'll let that go. change my strategy a little bit. I'm just a bit worried that I've got too much beer going into the keg and the problem I've got here is I don't know how full the keg is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change from put, uh, opening the valve, the check valve, and actually put a serving tap on the other end so when the beer does come to the valve, uh, check, I'll show you. When the beer gets to the tip of this little tube which is only, which is only a little bit which is only a little bit down, and beer starts coming out, that's when I know I'm full enough. So I might have to do that just to be sure I don't uh, overfill my keg. Okay, so what I've gone and done is I've actually put a uh, regulator on here without the gauge, of course, because it'll ruin the gauge if I get beer in it. But at least this I can clean out later. Um, I've pressurized, I had to bring the pressure up to about 10 pounds, it still doesn't seem to come out of this. There we go, so you can hear it coming out now. So 10 pounds per square inch is coming out of this hole. Once beer comes out of there, it's time to turn the pressure off. That's a, the that's a theory. There you go, beer's starting to come up through there now. So, disconnect. It is now full. <laughs> I know it's a weird way and a strange way to do it, but it worked. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Alright, so, so our keg is full. It has my European la lager with added hops in there, ready to go. I just want to do one last thing. I want to make sure, I just want to get a sample of the beer. I want to make sure it's, um, I'll be back. I just want to find out what my final reading is. So I'll quickly take a sample. Oh, it's foaming up because it's under has so much pressure. I shall empty the pressure out. 
Now, just remember too that this beer is going to be carbonated because it's been sitting in um, a brew. So it's, all, it's been sitting in carbon all this time and actually under pressure. So it's going to have carbonation. So now I've got to wait for this carbonation to settle down so I can find out what gravity it is. So I'll get back to you on that one. Check it out. Looks pretty cool. So I've got a final reading of uh, 1.0, 1 0.002. Now I tasted it and it doesn't taste too bad. So I don't know if that's incorrect, but it seems pretty, pretty low. It's like it's fermented right down to the minimum. Uh, as tasting it again, it didn't taste bad at all. So I'm hoping it will just age really well. Uh, it's not gonna be a sweet beer, I can tell you now. It's gonna be a very dry beer. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So thank you very much for watching. Thanks for taking the time to see this video. Um, I hope you got something out of it. I certainly did. And uh, we'll see you next time. See ya.